On the line with us is our old buddy Lori Wallach, the executive director of Public Citizens Global Trade Watch. Tradewatch.org is the website. And of course, uh, you can tweet Lori at Wallach, W A L L A C H, Lori, L O R I. And Lori, welcome back. We, last time we talked, we were talking about TRIPS, the trade related uh, intellectual properties, if I, as uh, I'm re recalling, if that's what it stands for, and uh, how we might get vaccines into the arms of uh, poorer people in poorer countries in the world that can't quite afford to do it themselves. But where are we at? So the great news is that the Biden Harris administration on May 5th came out in favor of this waiver of intellectual property barriers and then has worked to get Japan and Australia and Brazil and a handful of other countries that had been recruited by President Trump to block this critical initiative. But here's the bad news. Angela Merkel, the Chancellor of Germany, is adamantly opposed to this waiver and she has right now got the entire EU position locked down the way the voting happens. Hmm. And then kind of hiding behind her is the UK and Switzerland. It's down to the European Union, led by Germany's recalcitrance. France is for the waiver. Belgium is for the waiver. Italy, Spain. But Germany has the blocking vote. So the European Union delegation and the UK and Switzerland. The whole rest of the world is the WTO is trying to do this waiver and those three entities are stopping them. There's what a negotiation is, happening right now. What is her argument? Uh, well, it doesn't make a lot of sense. Um, there are a variety of them. Today there was a big Joe Stiglitz op-ed in the main so German publication, Die Zeit, that laid out why the arguments that the Germans are making don't make sense. Number one argument is it's not necessary. But of course it's necessary because the pharmaceutical companies, if everything goes right, might make, might make 6 billion doses by the end of the year. And we need 15 billion right. to get herd immunity. And if we don't do that, it increases enormously the chance of a vaccine-resistant variant that we then all have to start from scratch getting revaccinated and millions more people dead. So they say, oh, it's not necessary, but it is. They say rely on big pharma, but we have, and we've got not what we need to get as far as enough vaccine to actually end the pandemic. Then they say, well, developing countries can't make this. It's very fancy, and it'll, if, if, if we waive this, nothing will happen because they don't have the capacity or they'll make unsafe meds. And that really is as neo-colonialist and racist as it sounds. Mm -hmm. Because, in fact, the Washington Post, the New York Times, AP has been replete with stories about world-class manufacturers all over the global south, some of whom you and I, when we get certain vaccines in the U.S., they're coming from the Serum Institute in India. It's the world's largest maker <laughs> of vaccines in the world. Generic meds, the FDA has approved them. And there's a whole series, Tom, of these world-class manufacturers that came out of U.S. government money in the mid-2000s mid trying to actually make sure that there was vaccine preparation. So... There's one in Bangladesh, there's one in Egypt, there's one in Pakistan. These are really high-end, high-tech, government-approved. We can take their generic meds. And so we don't need every country to make it. We need to get online this capacity exists and in places where there isn't enough capacity to get new lines started. We need basically to triple the volume of supply because truly, if we're not all vaccinated, no one is safe. So, uh, Lori, my, my recollection, and correct me if I'm wrong on this, because this is just a recollection, is that the kind of origin story of the mRNA vaccines, the ones that are so spectacularly successful against this virus, um, was with a couple of immigrants to Germany. Um, uh, as I recall, Turkish immigrants, uh, a husband and wife team of scientists who helped develop this. If that's the case, is, does that have something to do? I mean, is there a German business here that's leaning on Merkel or, uh, you know, German pride or something? Or, uh, I mean, you know, she's no dummy. This is a woman with a Ph.D. in physics she's, uh, or chemistry. Now, I, I forget which. And, and uh, you would think that the idea that you don't want variants that can kill even people who have been vaccinated would sink in. Right. So two things to that end, because you're spot on. She has a PhD in chemistry, and part of the problem here is 
from her past life, she is herself a bit of an intellectual property maximalist. Uh, because as a scientist who's been in the industry, she's very much stuck on this false notion that without these monopolies, no money will be made. Right. In fact, even with this waiver, the only thing that would stop is the companies that are now monopolizing production and don't want extras made because they're thinking about the boosters. Like Pfizer last month just said publicly, we're, we're making $26 billion this year with the $20 a shot pandemic pricing, but next year is going to be profitable. Because we'll be selling boosters to rich countries for 150 to 175 dollars a shot, Whoa. and they don't want competing producers. So, with respect to Germany, it's the it's the ideology of Angela Merkel in favor of this, you know, patents right. for for her his own history. And, and Switzerland is, two, is just always in favor of anything that helps rich white bankers and people like that. Um, and then number two problem though is. The history of mRNA, yes, is very tied to the, 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 the couple scientists, husband and wife team, who are behind Beyond Tech, mm -hmm. which is, um, he, he's a migrant from Turkey. She's born in Germany of Turkish parents, Turkish migrant parents. It's a wonderful story. They are two people who are in a community of, of scientists around the world. The original person who came up with the idea of mRNA was from Hungary. The person who then took it the next step is a woman who was American at the University of Pennsylvania. There are scientists all around the world who've been collaborating on this. Now, here is the piece of it that makes no sense, though. So, yes, certainly there's German pride. But here's the problem. The couple in Germany behind BioNTech have sold absolute monopoly rights to Pfizer for worldwide production, except for Germany, Turkey, and China. They sold production rights in China to a Chinese company. So right now, the monopolist isn't even the German firm. The German firm gets paid per dose. The monopolist is Pfizer. So why mm. Angela Merkel should feel protective about U.S. giant big pharma troll? Pfizer's not Pfizer. a German company. It's an American company? American. Mm-hmm. Okay. So yeah. it's extremely mysterious. Now, S our counterparts in Germany are beside themselves. I can imagine. But they just don't understand what the hell is going on. Is Germany standing in the way of 130 countries? Yeah, and just to, just to recap for people who who might have just tuned in, or or and because I didn't, I don't think I did a good job of setting this up at the very beginning. What we're talking about here is not going to Pfizer and saying we're taking your vaccine away from you, and uh, you're going to have to give it away for free now, uh, or anything like that. What we're saying is that company countries around the world that have the ability to produce vaccines will license essentially these vaccines from Pfizer. They just won't be doing it at this really, really high price. Do I have that right? If I'm recalling this from the last time we talked, that this isn't actually very, gonna hurt these big companies, it's gonna help the rest of the world. It's very close. So right now, the problem is that you have a handful of vaccines that are the most successful, the mRNA vaccines. And the whole world wants them. The companies want monopoly control under patents, copyrights, trade secrets, other forms of intellectual property monopoly. They, these, these handful of companies, Pfizer, Moderna, et cetera, have been approached by world-class manufacturers in many countries, from like Kiva in Israel to the ones that I mentioned in Bangladesh and Pakistan, et cetera. And they have asked simply for the rights from the company to be able to produce. So that instead of maybe having 4 billion doses of the, of the mRNA vaccines, if we're lucky at the end of this year, there will be enough for the whole world. And these companies have systematically said, no, we just are not going to allow anyone else to make it. Right. And as I said, Pfizer just come out flat out and said, why? They don't want any competition so that next year when they can charge 150 to $175 for rich people for boosters, they don't want to have competition. Because right, right now the pandemic price is 20 bucks. The shot, Pfizer is still making $26 billion this year, the biggest profit of any pharmaceutical company on a single medicine next year, if they literally are going to charge five times as much plus, imagine. So they don't want more makers. The waiver would simply unlock the gate to allow more companies to have the right to be able to produce the same medicine. Depending on the law and the company, country, they have to pay either a royalty, say, which is based on, you know, per shot, what you make, giving back to Pfizer, giving back to BioNTech or Moderna, if they make the Moderna shot. Mm -hmm. Depending on the country, the different domestic laws would have compensation different ways. 
But the reality is, the only question is, can more doses be made? This is not throwing away their rights. It's not stealing their vaccine. It's just saying to them, you had an option to this voluntarily. You had many qualified producers. You said no. Right. We'll need to be able to make it. You'll get your money, but you will not control people having no access and dying right. because of you. Totally, totally get it. So before we hit the break here, Lori, um, and your phone is kind of uh, fading in and out. I'm not sure why. Um, uh, but uh, is there anything that you know people like like me or like our listeners can do to lobby the German government? I mean, or 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 our government to put pressure? I mean. Is there a pressure point here, or is this just information? No, there is a pressure point. So Angela Merkel, the, 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 the leader of Germany, is coming to Washington, D.C. on the 15th of July. And oh. around the country, there are going to be events. There are 40 German consulates sprinkled all across the country. And Public Citizen and Citizens Trade Campaign are organizing protests all around the country at those vigils. So you can come with a candle in the name of someone you love who has died or been sick from COVID and be part of the solution. Because there is one thing that Germany does not want. It's bad press in the United States. Hmm. So the way to get involved is please go to a website called rethinktrade.org, www.rethinktrade.org. You can sign up to become an activist. You can get information that way on where these vigils are going to be. Forty different cities in the U.S. are going to have these vigils. There's going to be a huge fiesta of protests in Washington, D.C. So if you're in the DMV, please be part of that. Everyone can get involved. And in the short term, the thing that you actually ought to do is call your member of Congress, your House member, because the Democrats, particularly in Congress, have been putting a lot of pressure on the German embassy, on the European Union embassy, to knock it off. So they need to be thanked, these members of Congress, and ask, please, double down, get the German and European Union guys out of the way so the whole world can get these vaccines. Yeah, that sounds like a plan. And the website, again, is... Rethink Trade, www.rethinktrade.org. Rethinktrade.org. Lori Wallach with uh, uh, TradeWatch.org, Public Citizens Global Trade Watch. Lori, it's always great talking with you. I always learn something. Thanks so much for dropping by.